Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2020-21 season. My name is Dan and today I've finally given in to all of your comments asking me to show my latest team. And I'm going to show you it uh, again, another another one of my drafts. So this is this is where I'm at right now. Um, there's been a few changes and stuff um, within injuries and stuff. And I kind of want to explain where I'm going with this team in a little bit more detail. But I'll try and keep it as fairly as brief as possible. And um, before we get going, I know for a fact that 80% of you watching this video right now, maybe even more, are not subscribed. Don't be part of the 80%. Subscribe to my channel and I promise you, I'm going to help you win all of your mini leagues. I'm going to help you get your best ranking you've ever got, your best overall overall ranking you've, you've ever got in FPL. And um, yeah, you're going to get some really good scores and you're going to do it right here on this channel. So please do click subscribe, uh, click on the notification bell as well if you want to get everything straight, uh, straight away. Get, I'll feed you so much fantasy stuff and we're going to get you winning. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at this team first of all. Uh, wow, I mean, okay, so we, we, we're starting off. We're starting off where we where we left off last time. So McCarthy is in goal still. Um, I really think that generally speaking, throughout the FBL season, the 4.5 million goalkeepers are going to score roughly the same as a 5 million goalkeeper, um, as, as long as you pick the best 4.5 million goalkeeper. And I believe that best keeper to be McCarthy. Southampton are a slightly better defensive team, certainly on the second half of last season. They're really building in defence. They're buying. Uh, they've put, signed Kyle Walker-Peters permanently as a right-back. They've signed uh, this Salisu guy, really highly rated centre-back. So, and they're going to be signing another central defensive midfielder as well, we believe. So Southampton really going in on spending on defence to shore that up. Uh, and I think they're going to have a really, really strong season. So McCarthy, is def it just seems like such a bargain at 4.5 compared to Ryan playing in Brighton. Brighton under Graham Potter, not such a great defensive team. So I'm not so keen on, on Ryan at Brighton. And McCarthy is nailed, don't worry. Um, as soon as he came into the team last season, he stayed in the team. The only other goalkeeper I'd kind of consider is Emmy Martinez, who plays for Arsenal right now. But only if he gets a, a transfer to another Premier League team. Um, say he got transferred to a, a semi-good defensive Premier League team, then that could look really good and he could be a good option. But for right now, I'm going with McCarthy, so I'm sticking right there. Going on to defence is Trent Alexander-Arnold. Don't go without him. I know I've seen a few comments saying... Oh, I think I think actually I could I, I can live without Trent Alexander Arnold. You can't. I'm telling you now, you cannot. Um, he's, he's got a little bit of a niggle at the moment, a little tiny little injury, but we are expecting him to be back by game week one. So I wouldn't worry about that too much until we hear something different. Say there's some late news saying Alexander Arnold he is not going to be fit for game week one. I guess you could you could reconsider, but even so, I would still want him on my bench to bring him in into game week two, to not to save a transfer and just play someone else there instead. Um, off my bench, but we'll get to our bench a little bit later. But Trent Alexander-Arnold stays in my team; and he's not going anywhere. Next up, Ruben Vinagre, 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 Vinegar, Vinegar Boy, Vinegar Boy is is going in there. Four point five million to get yourself into the uh, Wolves defense. He's an absolute absolute bargain. So um, yeah, I, I, I don't think you can go any go bad really with this one. So. He can play left back, he can play right back as well. We know Doherty is left, so now that opens up even more of an opportunity for Vinagra to, to play football. So that's going to look really good. Johnny Otto obviously injured right now, so he's not going to be playing. So that makes Vinagra right now the first choice fullback on probably either side. So unless Wolves bring in another two uh, fullbacks, then... Vinagre is, is the player to have, isn't he? And Johnny Otto is not going to be back fit until sort of at least around Christmas time. So you're going to have your wild card by then anyway, used up, I would imagine. So we can just wild card Vinagre out later if we need to, um, when he does start getting benched or whatever. Next up, um, we've got, we got Justin in now. And Justin was not in my team before. Um, he has come in. Uh, since um, I learned about Ferguson's injury, and I've had, I'm having some doubts about Lamptey, so I've taken Lamptey out and I've put in James Justin. Now, we know Chilwell's gone now, um, and I know you're probably thinking, well, Justin, we like Justin because he's filling in at right back for Pereira. Pereira's going to be back in October, and Justin is going to take, he's going to lose his position when Pereira's back. But the, oh, I know this because I played FIFA 19, and Justin was listed as a left back. For Luton Town in uh, in the in FIFA 19, um, and I've done a bit of research. Justin can indeed play left back. He's played a lot of time at left back as well. So 
maybe Justin is going to be the guy playing at left back um, longer term. I, I think if if Brendan Rodgers has a lot of faith in him, then perhaps that's going to happen. That could be really interesting. So as long as Leicester don't sign another left back, I'm going to be sticking with Justin. Um, Otherwise, if, if if they do sign another left back, I would be a little bit concerned of when Pereira comes back. I'm going to have to make a transfer that I don't really want to make. So perhaps I reconsider then. But for now, what we've got here is is Vinagre and Justin rotate really nicely. You can see right on screen that they both play Man City in their first four, um, but on different of different days, obviously. Um, but yeah, they have different game weeks where they struggle, and their other game weeks they've got really good fixtures. So when we go onto my bench um, soon. They all, all of my uh, defenders, other than Trent Alexander-Arnold, who plays every single week, who will play every single week, the other defenders will rotate very nicely. So they're always playing a nice and easy fixture. I've always got two defenders with a lovely fixture. Never have to pl play my defenders against horrible Manchester City's, Liverpool's. Never have to go near that, which is just brilliant. And um, it's exactly what we want. So moving on to midfield, we've got Mo Salah. Um, cheaper than last season and the same player as last season. Um, it's going to be another big year for Salah. He's been uh, consistently, well, over the last three seasons, I guess you would say he's been the fantasy player to have over the past three seasons. So judging by previous form, Salah, absolutely fantastic. I don't think you can go wrong with having him in your team at all. His ownership is creeping up very slowly as a lot of people are going for him. I think Salah is going to be one of the two players in game week one who's going to have the the best score and, and going to be the best option to be a captain, basically, really. Um, so, yeah, really keen on Salah. Um, I can't really imagine having a team without him. And I'll probably keep Salah in pretty long term, to be honest, because he's just a player who, over the course of the season, will score you so many points. He will be constantly a captain option. Um, unlike my next guy, Abamyang, who is a little bit more of a risky choice when it comes to captaincy. Um, but same price as Salah. And I do imagine I will bring, uh, bring Abamyang out in game week three and replace him with... I'm thinking Sterling at the moment, but I could also do Kevin De Bruyne if I wanted to. So Man City's fixtures, um, they're not, they're, obviously they miss game week one. And then game week two, game week three, it doesn't look amazing. I think they've got Wolves game week two and then Leicester game week three. So they're not amazing fixtures. So I'm not that keen on, I, I don't feel any pressure to immediately bring in a load of Man City players. And I can keep a Bamiang for those first two beautiful fixtures against Fulham and West Ham. And then maybe as, as a Bamiang plays against Liverpool, and then Sheffield United, that's a good time to swap him out. Very easy switch to a Sterling or a Kevin De Bruyne. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing there. But I definitely want a Bamiang for game week one because he's one of the two players, Salah and a Bamiang, I think are the guys. You've got to captain one of them. I really strongly feel that way. Um, they're going to be the big scorers for this week. Um, there'll probably be another few big scorers, obviously, but these are the ones I could be confident in. Next up is Hyun-min Son. Um, whilst Kane is sort of um, he, well, he can't play in the friendlies at the moment. He's been quarantined for coronavirus. Um, Son is playing up front. He is the backup striker. I, and I've, I've seen a couple of things about Tottenham potentially playing five at the back. I'm not sure how much I believe it. But if they do play five at the back, that means Son plays up front as a striker with Kane. Um, Son in friendlies looking super, super hungry. Him and Deli Ali have looked really, really good in friendlies. So I'm really look, liking the look of the hunger and the desire from Son and Ali. Um, there's obviously something very good going on in that club right now for those two guys. So Son is the one I'm going for because I do think um, uh, Spurs do have some nice fixtures. But you're, you're not going to like me for saying this. But I'm withholding 1.5 million in the bank to switch Son to Bruno Fernandes in game week two. And I'm, I'm set on that decision. That is a decision that I'm making. And I know you'll be thinking, well, what if Son does really well? What about, um, what about his good fixtures going forward after that? Well, I'm sort of not thinking about that, to be honest, because I always knew that I needed a player to be a placeholder for Bruno Fernandes. I definitely want Bruno Fernandes in game week two. So I've got to choose a player to fill in for one game um, before I bring Bruno Fernandes in. And... Quite frankly, I've got to look at Son's first game in isolation and his first game looks really good and I want to have Son for that game week. So I'm not I'm not even thinking about his games after that because he's only there for one. You, you can't view it as, oh, well, you actually may as well keep him. No, he was never going to be in my team in, in the first place. If Bruno Fernandes was playing game week one, Son wouldn't be near my team. So I'm, I'm, I kind of, I'm really, really strongly thinking 
Son's going to have a great game week one. Thank you for those points, Son. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm going to move you on to Bruno Fernandes, who is someone I want long term. So that's the kind of tactic I'm going for there. And finally, in midfield, my, uh, I guess, controversial one. But I just, I have a really, really good feeling about James Ward-Prowse. Um, Southampton looked magnificent at the end of last season. They've they sort of, I think... Over the eight games, they would they if if the if the whole Premier League season was judged on those final eight games post lockdown, then Southampton would be third in the table. They were the third best team after that lockdown break, and James Ward Prowse was absolutely at the heart of it. He um he actually really really underperformed his stats really, um, which is not something he often does in, in previous seasons. So he was sort of expected to have so many goals, so many assists. He didn't actually, these, these goals and assists didn't materialise, but you expect that eventually um, the stats will regress to the mean. Um, everything will start to fall into place a little bit and Ward Prowse will start actually getting these goals, getting these assists as well. Um, so I'm really looking forward to him getting those free kicks. He's nailed on. Ward Prowse played 38 out of 38 games last season. So real safe pick. The team is built around him. He takes free kicks. He takes corners. He takes penalties. He's the club captain. Um, in a Southampton team that I think are going to be this season's Leicester. That's my prediction, that Southampton are going to be this season's Leicester. So, I'm going to have a lot of faith in Ward Prowse, and I think, I can't, I, I know you're going to be saying there's so many other options at, at 6 million. Maybe you go for an Eze, maybe you go for um, a Pereira. No, I'm not doing it. I'm going for Ward Prowse. Um, that's my pick. That's my sort of differential pick, my prediction of a player who's going to do really well. And I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it, guys. Um, going up front in here, we've got Timo Werner. Timo Werner scored within 10 minutes of his uh, Chelsea-friendly debut. Um, small concerns about whether Werner will be able to play as a lone striker. Will he have to play off the left wing? Is he going to be in competition with Pulisic on the left wing? Is he going to play in a two-man strike force? Where does everyone else fit in? Is he going to be rotated? There, I understand there's the, these questions. Werner, very much proven goal scorer and assist maker. His stats are incredible in the Bundesliga. Bundesliga German players translate very well into the Premier League compared to a lot of other uh, players from other leagues, French leagues, don't convert very quickly. They take a little bit longer to settle in. So, yeah, there are slight doubts about Werner. I'm very much willing to take a punt on him. And worst case scenario, Werner is an incredibly easy transfer down to Martial or perhaps there's a striker who's who's looking really, really good form at the beginning of the season. We can switch to them. We can switch to Martial from Werner. Easy, lovely job. So, Werner, I'm going to take a risk on him. And if it doesn't pay off, there's a very easy escape there as well. So, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned about that really either. So, Mitrovic, he's very high ownership. And for good reason, he's sort of, sort of the most popular 6 million striker. He does look good. Premier League experience. I've spoken to him a little bit of, uh, in quite detail in, in my Fulham video. Um, really good fixtures. Fulham have got really, really nice fixtures as well. Sort of for a good 10 games as well. Looking really nice. Mitrovic, Premier League experience. Top goal scorer last season. All of Fulham's goals seem to go through Mitrovic. I think he was involved in something like 46% of Fulham's goals last season. Um, so if Fulham are scoring, Mitrovic is involved, basically. Um, so, yeah, really, really excited to see what he can bring as a 6 million striker. I don't think he's going to be amazing, but if he can sort of get me 13, 14 goals throughout the season, then that's pretty good returns for a 6 million striker. And then finally, the slightly... Um, riskier but more explosive one is Che Adams. Now, Che Adams, a lot of people wrote him off, um, but after lockdown, he he was incredible, scoring goal after goal after goal, getting assists, um, outperforming Danny Ings in pretty much every area after after the lockdown break. So he became just this just this incredible player in terms of. The problem is, that will he get minutes? That's the only issue. If he plays, he will bang if he carries on his form from last season. So I do think he is a good alternative, a cheap alternative to Danny Ings, who I know a lot of people are going for. But Adams actually, his stats looked a lot better than Danny Ings's at the end of last season. We saw Danny, uh, Che Adams score a few goals, get, an, get a few assists, and we thought, wow, those are loads of points he got there from, from Che Adams. But he actually, even then, he was underperforming his stats. So he can do even better. He can do even more. And that's, again, what I'm punting on him to do. I've been looking at the stats. I've been thinking, who's going to do well? It's, I'm thinking Southampton. I've identified sort of Adams and Ward-Prowse as the guys who are going to pick up all of those points. Um, I really like the look of both of them. Obviously, Danny Ings, he'll pick up points as well. But I 
think Che Adams could be this season's um, surprise high goal scorer. There's a possibility. The talent is clearly there. He was signed for a reason. He's wearing the number 10 shirt for a reason. Um, there's a lot of faith in him right now and a lot of confidence in him. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he can produce. I like the player a lot. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens there. So that's so that's sort of my differentials to Southampton guys. Um, for they're fairly low in ownership, but I have confidence in them. Um, and yeah, and I promise you, I'm not a Southampton fan. I just I just the stats tell me a story that looks very very nice. It's a it's a story that is has, a, has hopefully got a wonderful ending, but we'll we'll soon see, won't we? Then moving on to the bench very quickly, Nyland, um, the only starting goalkeeper at Aston Villa right now, apart from maybe Jed Steer. Maybe Jed Steer comes in instead of Nyland, um, but I think Nyland is probably just about more likely to start. So we're going to go for him. Not that he's ever going to come off my bench, but it's good to have in an emergency. And we've got Gordon there, um, probably the. Out of all of the 4.5 midfielders, probably the most potential to have a really good season. So I could either go for something boring like a Stevens or a Romeo, um, who are just going to pick me up one or two points a game if they happen to come off the bench. I don't really want that. I'd rather have a, take a little bit of a risk on a lower ownership Gordon, who, you know, say he has a couple of good games, he could become an amazing player and he's an attacking player as well. So he could be actually end up scoring a lot of points. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting my faith in him a little bit right now. Uh, moving on to Ailing, who is going to be one of my rotation defenders. So he's going to rotate with Vinagre and Justin over the first sort of four or five games. It'll be those three, and they'll take it in turns coming off the pitch, depending on who has um, who has the worst fixture, basically, will sit on my bench, and the other two will play. And the, they rotate really, really nicely. So I'm always covered to have um, sort of at least two of them on green fixtures. So really, really nice there. So that's what I'll um, I'll keep doing, keep rotating those guys. And then finally, Ferguson on the, on the bench. And I know uh, I've spoken about this a little bit before. Everyone's saying, take Ferguson out. He's injured. There's no point playing him. Listen, Ferguson, he was signed to become the long-term first choice right back at Crystal Palace. Yes, he hasn't played football in a while. Yes, he is not going to be ready for the start of the season. But when he does start playing in game week three, four, five, which he will. I know it says unknown return date, but he's not that far off. He's in training. He's going to be starting to play a bit of Premier League football. So, um, like I say, around game week three, four, five. When it comes to game week six or seven, suddenly everyone is going to want Ferguson. His his price is going to skyrocket, and I'm already I'm already sitting here with him on my bench. I'm not wasting money on him. He's the lowest possible price a player can be. I don't need him in my team. I've already got my defence covered at least for the first sort of six seven games. Where and then after that, I'll be perhaps looking at Ferguson to try and fill in some of my red fixtures. So, yeah. I, just having a little bit of patience. Ferguson, he's, he's going to be... Everyone's going to bring him in as soon as he's fit. His price is going to skyrocket. He's going to go up to sort of 4.2, 4.3, 4.4 million. And then you're just going to have to start sacrificing 4.5 million defenders to get Ferguson in. I've already got him. I haven't wasted a transfer. Happy days as far as I'm concerned. So I'm playing the long game here. And uh, I, w I want you guys to, to play the long game with me. And if you don't, then... Happy days, you're just going to push up the price of Ferguson later down the line, and I look forward to it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys will join me on um, on Ferguson on the bench. Team Ferguson on the bench, guys, let's go. Um, so yeah, um, captaincy, I will talk about captaincy in much more detail closer to the game week one deadline. But what I will say is I'm going for a Bamiyang captain with Salah Vice. I know most people are going for Salah captain with a Bamiyang Vice, but I'm going in the other way. Trust me, I've got I've got some notes, and I will I will tell you this closer to the game week one deadline. So make sure you're subscribed, and make sure um, make sure you've got the notification bell on, because I'm gonna tell you why Abamyang is an amazing choice for this fixture, and how, why I think he's got a much better chance of scoring highly than uh, than Salah has. Yeah, Abamyang is the one. Trust me on this one, but I'll explain that a little bit later on uh, in in a week. Or, or maybe a little bit more than the week, we'll see. Um, yeah, so that is my team. 98.5 squad value, 1.5 in the bank, just to make those moves to Bruno Fernandes and then bring Aubameyang down to um, sort of probably Sterling in game week two. So I've got a little bit of a plan there. I've got rotation defenders. I've got Ferguson that I'm sitting on for later. I've got the differentials in Adams and Ward-Prowse, who I really have a lot of faith in and I hope they can perform for me. Um, 
the stats tell me that they will, the underlying, the underlying stats. I've got Werner, who I really hope can do well. If he doesn't, I easily switch him to Martial or another striker who is performing. And I've got everything covered. I, I, I think I'm at a stage where I've got everything covered. And, and if you've watched my videos before, you will notice that my team hasn't really changed that much, which is a very good sign. The fact that my team hasn't changed that much means that I'm near enough there. I'm near enough got it right, surely. There will be a couple more changes, I'm sure, but I think I'm nearly there. I think I'm, this is very close to what I'm going to be starting with, and I'm really confident about this team. Um, so, yes, I think I've gone on just about enough. Um, I do have a little bit of an announcement, though, actually, um, that you guys might be interested in. I've started off a Patreon for my YouTube channel where you can basically help support the channel by pledging, you know, a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds, whatever your local currency is, um, towards helping support the channel. And uh, my aim is to go full time on this channel at some point, And I can only really do that with crowdfunding. So uh, patreon.com forward slash FPL mate is the place to go. Um, have a look because there's some nice rewards there as well. If you do pledge or donate a couple of dollars, you can get some really nice rewards. So we've got my, uh, my Discord chat where you can chat with me, um, do like a nice text chat. Um, over Discord where we can talk about fantasy football, we can talk about anything you like really. I'm already chatting on there with some guys already because a couple of people have signed up because I put it out on Twitter. And there's some other awards like um, a special uh, Patreon only mini league, um, you know, early access to videos, uh, videos as podcasts, all kinds of stuff like that. Go check it out, there's loads of stuff there. And, um, and you might be interested, you might be interested. If not, no problem. Um, all of my content is always going to be free here on YouTube, so don't worry about that. But if, you wanted to, if you're interested in supporting the channel, then that would be awesome. Um, yeah, again, as I keep saying, if you are new around here, 80% and all that, please do consider subscribing. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, if you took anything away from this video. I hope you did. I hope this was useful in some way. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I don't want to go on for too much longer because I know I can talk about fantasy football till the cows come home. I absolutely love it. I'm very passionate about this subject. So, yes, I will catch you all on the next one, guys. Hopefully, uh, I'll see you next, guys, uh, next time, guys. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later, mates. Bye-bye.